Hi, I'm Steve Jupe from Cosmic Sciences team and with this short video I'm going to talk you through a few ways that you could use Cosmic's actionability data. So when you download the actionability data file it will have a file extension of .tsv. Now on most uh, computers you'll find that when you double click on the file it will automatically open in your spreadsheet viewer or alternatively you can right click on the file and you'll have an option of open with and then you get to choose which um, software application to open it with and I'm going to select Excel. Here is the file opened. So I've got the data set open in front of me uh, but to answer any interesting questions uh, I'm going to want to apply some filtering and do some searching. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose in the view options to freeze the top row. So freezing the top row means that um, the column headers will stay in place when I scroll up and down and that will make it a lot easier to understand what I'm looking at. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the data tab and I'm going to switch on filtering and basically filter for all the columns. So these drop down arrows now will allow me to filter the contents of the individual columns. The contents of the uh, download file are explained in the readme file that accompanies it. Uh, but to very briefly summarize, uh, eff effectively the rows represent individual uh, cohorts or groups of patients from trials. And it's entirely possible for there to be multiple rows for a single trial if there were multiple cohorts. And the columns represent parameters that are associated with the trials. Um, most important ones are probably the, the, on the, the far left, the gene, uh, the, the specific mutation or variant associated with that gene, uh, the disease, uh, the actionability rankings, uh, the names of the drugs or drug combinations, uh, uh, identifiers for the trial and then scrolling across the source of the information. Now this is either the source where the trial was identified or the place where the results for the trial were identified. Further across in the file, um, scrolling to the right hand side, are other important columns such as the uh, primary outcome measure uh, which is essentially the, uh, the, the thing that's going to be measured in the trial that will determine whether or not it's been successful, uh, the patient numbers, and then uh, effectively multiple columns of results from the trial. Uh, and there are lots of different measures for the outcomes of trials. The most common ones are represented here with their own columns. The other place the results can be recorded is in this progression remark column. This column is used for results that are uh, less common uh, and consequently don't have their own dedicated results column. So let's say that um, I would like to generate a list of all of the uh, combinations of mutation uh, with a specific disease that have uh, at least one FDA approved drug. So uh, for this example, I'm going to filter on the disease column and I'm going to choose uh, biliary tract carcinoma. So I'll unselect everything and then scroll down and choose the disease that I'm interested in. So biliary tract carcinoma, check that box. Um, and I've now got a list of everything in actionability for biliary tract carcinoma. Um, if I would like to only see the things which have at least one FDA approved drug, I can go to this actionability column and choose the actionability ranking of one. So not select all, select just one. So now this list of mutations um, in the column uh, called mutation uh, remark, each of these has at least one drug that's been approved by the regulatory authorities. And that was what led it to gain the actionability ranking of one. Um, however, actionability rankings are associated with the combination of the mutation and the disease, not the individual trials. So if I'd like to see which drugs have gained um, FDA approval, I need to do an extra filter, which is to filter on uh, development status here. 
So development status, if I now unselect all and choose approved FDA, now I'm seeing a list of the FDA approved drugs uh, associated with uh, mutations in biliary tract carcinoma. And you can see it's a much shorter list of uh, types of mutation. In fact, there uh, effectively there are three different uh, mutation types there. And if I look at uh, the list of drugs, the, these are the drugs which are approved for the treatment of biliary tract carcinoma with the uh, caveat that the cancer must have uh, one of these uh, named mutations. Okay, so that's one thing you can do uh, with actionability data. Um, let's say that rather than looking at things which have FDA uh, approval, I'm gonna reset the filters now. Um, instead, I would like to see everything that has not yet gained regulatory approval, but looks like it might be promising. And what I mean by that is that the trial has results and those results have met their primary objective. And the primary objective was something that you could apply a statistical value to. When that's the case, that would trigger actionability ranking of two. So uh, I'm going to uh, apply the check mark for two, switch off the check mark for one. And now what we're looking at uh, is a list of uh, the combination of a mutation and a disease uh, where at least one of the trials had a promising, encouraging result. Um, so let's look at an individual disease. And so for my example, I'm going to select medullary carcinoma and because that's further down the list I'm going to do this in a different way. I'm going to start typing in medullary and uh, it's told me that there really is only that one option so I'm going to unselect everything and just select thyroid carcinoma. There we go. And so you'll see that I've automatically now reduced the list down to um, just three trials, in effect, which had an actionability ranking of two for, for thyroid medullary carcinoma. Uh, only one mutation remains, and it's RET M918T. So one of these trials, or at least one of these trials, had a result that had a statistical value uh, that was a good result, as in um, the p-value was less than 0.05. That, that's the cutoff. Um, so to find out which of these drugs, we now need to look at the primary outcome measure that was used for that trial. And that's in this column, primary outcome measure. And we can see that the first two use the primary outcome measure of overall response rate. The last one used progression-free survival. And to see the actual results for these trials, uh, we need to scroll across um, into the results columns um, for this. The first two were looking for overall response rate, which is uh, abbreviated to ORR. So here we are, ORR treatment. And you can see uh, the first trial doesn't have any ORR results. Um, so that's probably not the one that was promising. The second trial, um, has an ORR result, but it has no p-value, so it's not the second trial either. The third one, um, the primary outcome measure was progression-free survival. So if I scroll across a bit further to the columns that represent um, progression-free survival, you can see here's the p-value column, and that's this value here of uh, less than 0.0001 is the reason this trial was considered to be uh, a promising result and that was why this combination of mutation and disease gained an actionability ranking of two. Something else you might want to look at at this point is how long ago was this uh, result obtained? Well, you can get some idea by looking at this date here, the trial primary completion date. So this is the date at which the results uh, which are likely to be the result that by which this trial will be judged to be a success or not were obtained. And so for this trial, those results um, were obtained in 2011. 
Now that that's quite a long time ago now, um, so you might then regard this with some injection of uh, of scepticism because. Uh, if this was a very promising result in a phase three trial, you might have expect that it would have been submitted to the regulatory authorities by now. And, and that's a very long time for it to be considered before it gains approval. So perhaps these results weren't quite as promising as they immediately appeared. So thank you for watching today. Um, if you'd like to know more about the Actionability Project, then you can come to the Actionability homepage uh, cancer.sanger.ac.uk slash cosmic uh, look at the project actionability um, and this is where you would gain access to the data download file um, if you have any questions at all please feel free to contact us at uh, cosmic at sanger.ac.uk or via, via any of these other methods thank you